did you get as your answer? 5.9. Good. Again, we want to take our time and do our steps on paper so we don't make careless mistakes that lose this credit. But you did that correctly. That was the answer. There's a lot of steps that go into the process before we can actually calculate the PI. The first thought step is to start by imagining that everybody is fully protonated at a low pH. Not because the pH really is low, but just as a thought process. Then we start gradually raising the pH. This is where we started to run into some trouble getting the right charges here. But notice, if you think about it, these, these, these pictures always look the same because as you gradually raise the pH, you're always going to be deprotonating one function at a time, which means that the charge can only change in units of one. That was, the, that was, the, that was what should have set off the alarm signals with the first way that we were looking at this because I think it originally had the charge going from plus one to say minus one or minus two. But in all of these problems, since we're raising the pH gradually, one function at a time, it should always go one step at a time. Plus one to zero to minus one to minus two, then theoretically to minus three. We should never skip an integer. We start with the charge of the fully protonated form, and then we simply write, then we simply start making that, um, take, make that one step less positive, and then one step less positive again, and then one step less positive again. In fact, it's not even really necessary anymore to keep drawing the pictures. You don't really have, you can, it might help to draw the fully protonated form, but after that, you hardly even have to keep showing what the new pictures look like. You can simply say, well, I know if I raise the pH enough, it'll get one step less positive, and that'll happen at the lowest pKa. And then if I raise the pH enough again, it'll get one step less positive again at the next pKa. If you can save time by not actually drawing each of the new deprotonated forms. It's probably helpful to draw the most protonated form, but the rest of those we can just kind of work out on paper. That's something I probably should have mentioned before, that these numbers always just form a smooth series of integers with no jumps. Now we reviewed how to find the PI. Before we saw how to find the PI of a single amino acid. But your instructor can't really ask you that because those are already in the table. So what your instructor can ask you is the PI for a, a peptide with more than one amino acid because those are not in the table, but the table gives us the information we need to figure that out. Now, the mistakes that a lot of people would make, a lot of people don't realize that they don't need the pKa's for the carboxy carbons and nitrogens in the amide bonds. That was one of the main things we saw here. That's why we keep emphasizing that amines are basic, but amides are not. Amines are basic, but amides are not. That has very important practical implications. We no longer care about the pKa of this nitrogen because it's no longer an amine. It's an amide. And clearly, we no longer care about the pKa of this carboxy carbon because clearly it's not a carboxylic acid anymore. It's part of an amide. So the only main chain nitrogen that we care about is at the N terminus. And the only main chain carboxy carbon that we care about is at the C terminus. None of the other main chain nitrogens and carboxy carbons are acidic or basic anymore because they're all parts of amides. But we still also have to check for acids and bases on the side chains. Those can be important too. Good. Well, suppose that your instructor asked you, What's the pH at which we would get the maximum concentration of the negative one form? That would be the average of 9.6 and 10.0. That's right. Good. There's no special name for that. That's not called the PI, but they could still ask you that. Mm -hmm. And suppose they asked you, at what pH do we get equal concentrations of the plus one and the zero forms? 9.6. At what concentration would we get equal concentrations of the plus one form and the zero forms? 2. 2.2, because that's in between those two forms. At what at what pKa would we get equal at what pH would we get equal concentrations of the zero and the minus one form? 9.6. That's right. Those are the two different types of questions that the instructor can ask. And the PI is just one of those types of questions. It's just asking when do we get the maximum concentration of the zitterion. Good.
let's try to find the PI for this tripeptide.